Route Wallop Vlogs, episode 130. Mizzle and Mac out here in San Francisco, the beautiful Bay Area. This time we have May, Christina, and their Route Wallop Venus. This is a dope, dope episode. Please be sure you like, share, and subscribe. And as always, enjoy the video. I'm May, and this is Christina, and that is Venus. And Venus is nine months old. It's, she's a female, and she is actually Christina's dog. And the reason Christina has a Venus because she wanted to have a dog as her college graduation present. Well, growing up, we had an Australian Silky Terrier. So it's basically like a Yorkie except bigger. Um, and my mom actually had him before I was even born. She brought him over from China. So I grew up with him. Um, he was super sweet, super loving. He was just. He was mostly older as far as I could remember since she had him way before I was even born. Um, but I loved him and we took him to the dog park every day so I got to socialize with other dogs there and get acquainted with them. Actually, Fluffy Head was a present from my friend who lived in Hong Kong. Um, they got him for me as a present so I had to actually fly to Hong Kong to pick up Fluffy Head. Wow. Um, when I first saw Fluffy Head, he was about the size of my hand. <laughs> so I put him on my hand and he has like a giant Fluffy Head and a body, tiny body. So it was like, a, hey Fluffy Head, and yeah. that's how you got his name. <laughs> that's a neat story. <laughs> I like that. I would say since elementary school, that was something that I knew I wanted to be. Whenever like grown-ups would ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would always say veterinarian. Um, growing up, we had a lot of animals. We've had like generations of bunnies. We <laughs> have two chickens right now. We have four cats. We even had a turtle, hamsters, um, fish. So we've had a whole zoo of things. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Um, and then up until high school, so we had a career day, and then you could go to different classrooms and listen to um, different people talk about what they do for a living. So I went to one who was a veterinarian, and he kind of shut me down a little bit about being a veterinarian. He was saying that if you don't have experience as of right now in high school, then you shouldn't like go on pursuing it because you need like so many hours and you have to start young um, pursuing the veterinary career. And I was like, wow. I had no idea you had to do that. I guess it's too late for me to start this. So um, then I went to college and I was trying to explore what else I could do, what did I want to be. Um, and then it just all came back to being a veterinarian again. I was like, that's what I really want to do. So then I got more involved in the veterinary field. I started doing more research and I was like, wow, that guy was so wrong. Like, I can't mm -hmm. believe I listened to him. Yeah. Um, and so now I'm back on track. I graduated from SF State. Uh, with a biology degree and now I'm getting accepted into vet school so that's where I'm going to go in September. Um, but yeah, that's my story of how I got into veterinary medicine. I've been working at a vet hospital for almost four years now so I've definitely gotten a lot of experience there. Well, before I got a Rottweiler, I told some of my friends and my coworkers, and they were like, you have to be on top of training. Um, you have to socialize her immediately with other people and dogs. And that's just something I wanted to do right away because um, I knew about the stigmas there were, that they can be overly protective, unsocialized, um, that they can be aggressive towards people, dogs, anything that isn't part of their family. So. I knew immediately that I want to socialize her right when we got her. So right when she got all her vaccines, I took her to the dog park. I slowly introduced her um, and I made sure that there wasn't any like crazy dogs there that would traumatize her because I know as young puppies, it's really easy to have a bad experience and then for them to be terrified of people and dogs forever. So mm -hmm. um, that's what I made sure to do. and. I just didn't want her to have that stigma of being super aggressive towards everyone. I want to show people that Rottweilers can be really sweet. They can be loving and kind and just wanting to say hi to everybody and everything. Um, and it's just all a matter of how you raise them and how you socialize them. It's all about the owner. And I truly believe that there are no bad dogs. There's just bad owners. Before we got her, I actually Googled about the Rottweiler. I learned about what kind of personality they are. Um, what kind of behavior they might ex um, they um, might show. exhibit yeah yeah mm -hmm. so um, it does show they're loyal to the owners and they're very protective um, so I was expecting they could show some like a dominant 
personality. They could be um, a little bit tough or, or, or a little bit scary in a way when they get bigger. Mm -hmm. So um, I surprisingly didn't see any of that from Venus and then she has never shown any aggression at all. And even I put my hands into her mouth, she just sucks it. <laughs> <laughs> she just sucks it. Even she was teasing. She doesn't. She didn't bite so hard. And she just so sweet. And um, she would do anything under command. Would tell her to do things, and then she would just obey. Um, it just amazingly sweet. And Fluffy it's a, was a little dog. But Fluffy sometimes had his own idea. Yeah, he was a terrier, so he yeah, had that. Yeah, that, he know. had his own idea what what he wanted to do. But she's a big dog, and she's actually much um, sweeter. And well, I feel bad to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Fluffy Head is gonna be mad at me. Um, but Fluffy Head was always in my heart. So she's actually totally different and showing beautiful personality. I would say. That's and a beautiful then, thing. I like to hear that. I think they're pretty basic experience, like other Rottweiler owners probably always experience the same things. Um, whenever we're just walking down the sidewalk, there will be people who will go all the way across the street just to avoid her, or they're just kind of eyeballing her the whole time, like is she going to lunge at me or is she going to try to bite me um, when we're walking by. And then we've even had one time where Venus just kind of like turned over to try to sniff them and they jumped back and like <laughs> yelled and I was like, it's okay, she's fine, like she's friendly. I always have to reassure people that she's friendly, she's okay, um, she's not going to be aggressive towards you. Um, and I think uh, we even heard of like one experience that someone else had where someone even threatened to like use pepper spray on their Rottweiler wow. just for walking past them. Like the Rottweiler didn't even do anything and that's just the stigma that comes with them. Um, but wow. that's also kind of why I wanted her too. I wanted her as a protection dog. Just when people see her, they automatically don't want to mess with me. They're like, nope, like we're going to go over here. Um, and especially since I'm going to go away to vet school in September, I'm going to be living by myself. So Venus is like my guard protection dog. Um, there you go. Yeah, so there that's why I wanted her. So she is, I also think it's funny when people get scared of her. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Like walk <laughs> away. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So we have um, we have this kind of spike color for her, oh, yeah. and if we want her to look tough, we'll put that color on, and then it has spikes all around, so she looked really tough and definitely <laughs> scared Purple people. with little studs on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a sparkly, girly color, but it can still look scary too. Yeah, yeah, she looks really tough, and she, the way she walks, and people are like, okay, well, I'm not gonna mess with her. But go. that's when we walk her at night, or to places like hiking, if there's coyotes, stuff oh, like yeah. that, to protect her neck. But we thought it was funny because if people knew, little they knew, she's like a super sweet and she would have come over to lick you to death. Yep. We do a lot of hiking with her. We're always looking for different places to go hiking in the Bay Area. There's lots of options. Um, I think we go hiking with her at least twice a week. So every day I have off work, we always look for some other place to go and we go for a few miles. Um, I know it's easy for Rottweilers to get overweight, so I think exercise is so important for her. We take her out at least like three times a day. Um, we also like to take her to the beach since we're on the coast here. There's a lot of different options. She likes to run along the beach and dig in the sand and put her paws in the water and then chase her ball and play with the other dogs there. We've also taken her to a couple of lakes where she learned to go swimming for the first time. Um, that was when she was a tiny little puppy, so we were super excited about that. She would just put her feet in the water at first and we would throw a ball a little bit in and she would try to reach out for it and then all of a sudden when we weren't looking, she just kind of jumped <laughs> in and just started swimming around the lake. <laughs> and then we were just doing that we're for a couple hours. We were screaming like crazy. Yeah, <laughs> and taking videos. And then when we were just kind of doing our own thing, she just started swimming in the lake by herself and just having fun. It was a nice hot day, so she got to relax. So when Christina told me she wanted she wanted a Rottweiler as her graduation present, we did a shelter search first. Um, we did find a couple of Rottweiler, like maybe a little bit kind of mix, but they were gone just like within hours. Once you saw them on website and then you called the shelter and then they were already adopted. So um, I did more search, uh, research and I find a breeder up in Northern California in Butte County 
and I saw their website and I saw the beautiful pictures of our Rottweilers and they have all the parents picture they have like a personality of the parents and um, and then the most important thing is they said their dogs are um, their temperament it's really good so I said okay this is a good place to go so I started to reach out to them and then we got the information and then finally we got um, we got into line for um, a puppy we want a girl so definitely we have um, they can't guarantee all the, the puppies the gender so we're the second in line with the one one couple for the puppies and because we want to have have her in May that's when she was graduated mm -hmm. but the, the parents we signed up, they had seven babies and only one girl. <laughs> and that girl was already taken by another family like a long time ago. They wanted a girl as well. So the breeder told me, oh, never happened before. Always more than one girl. So we have no idea this is going to happen. And we're going to put you over the next one. And maybe June, July, or August, it was like, okay, it's a little bit sad, but we will so take sad. it. I know, yeah. she was like sad. You, you yeah. looking forward to it, right? She was right? Looking, <laughs> I've been looking forward to having a dog since high school or middle yeah, school. Yeah, she was really patient, waited more than four years yeah, for a she dog. She promised me that I could have a dog when I graduated college. And that was like in high school, and she thought and the she, day would never come. And but I was, I've been counting it down. Yeah. <laughs> like the second year of high school, hey, can I have my dog like a couple of years earlier? I was yeah. like, no. And then senior year, hey, can I have my dog like about six months earlier? I was like, no, it has to be exactly May. So when May is not going to happen, we we're like all sad. And then the breeder said, well, we have another, um, well, the pandemic started, the shutdown started. Mm -hmm. So they told us that there's another couple, um, the dogs, they have the babies and uh, they have a girl, but the, the family who had that girl, who, who, the, who uh, wanted that girl, they can't come over to California to pick her up. And I said, we take her, that's our <laughs> girl. And they were like, okay, we're gonna talk to them, see if they are willing to switch with you for the January, I mean, for the July. And then you can take the, this one. So. They are great, and we went there um, May 14, 2020, to pick up Venus when she was seven and a half weeks old. That's I remember awesome. we were driving to Butte County, and about five minutes away from the from the ranch, and then she got so nervous, and then she said that she had a stomach um, butterfly in her stomach, yeah. flying all over. <laughs> so we had to stop at the gas station, and she had to go to the bathroom just to yeah. calm down. <laughs> and then after that, and then we went there, and then. And then the breeder was there by the door and he was holding a little tiny dog or like that, that must be Venus and then he puts her down come over to say hi to us so Christina went there try to say hi to Venus and Venus got scared because that was the first time she saw other humans mm -hmm. and then she's never seen other humans before and then she just went hide under the table and then Christina just scooped her up and put her in her arms and that was like that's it and then she never left her Ever. Wow. How'd you come up with the name Venus? Oh, that's all her. <laughs> Tell me about that. How'd that happen? Well, we were, I made a list of different dog names that I wanted to do, and, and then I would just kind of look some up, like unique dog names. I didn't want like a basic name that there's thousands of them out there, and especially working at a vet hospital, I see them all the time. Um, so I knew I wanted something unique, and so I came across the name Venus and I did some more research and it turns out that Venus is the Roman goddess of love and beauty. And I told my mom about it and she's like, yeah, I really like that name. And I was like, I like it too. So then we're like, okay, now she's Venus. Awesome. Yeah. And on the way, we were driving on the way here, we made a joke. And we're like, hey, Venus, you're going to be a star today. <laughs> and Venus says, no, I'm a planet. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> This place we live, it's like a high-tech area. We have like Apple, we have Google, Yahoo, we have all kind of high-tech company people living in this area. And um, not many people actually know about the Rottweiler. The other day I was walking Venus and this FedEx guy was watching us and then he stopped and he said, oh my God, you have a killer dog. And I was like, well, why do you say that? And he said, those kind of dogs, they eat people. I was like, no, that's not true. And he's like, really? I said, no, this is a super sweet dog and then you just have to get to know them. 
And then he said, oh, really, can I take a picture? And then he took a picture of her, and then he's like, oh, maybe I can pet her. And then he stepped out of his car, and then he actually, he touched the Venus, and he was like so proud of himself, amazed, oh, I'm touching the killer dog. So that moment, I was thinking, no, they're not killer dog. People don't really know them. So what's the best way, what's the, a better way to let people know about the Rottweiler besides just walking them around. So when I heard about you doing this video shooting and then telling people not just your area, basically the entire U um, United States about how beautiful, how loving Rottweilers can be, I was like, yes, sign me up because I need people to know, especially in the Bay Area, they're not killing dogs. They're actually the wonderful dog and you can get and it's great for mem uh, for family members, great for protection if needed, and it's highly trainable. They're actually super, super intelligent. She can play so many tricks when she was like only six months old. Wonderful. And then she just keep adding the scales on her belt. Rottweiler definitely is the best breed, one of the best. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you both being on Rottweiler Vlogs episode 130. 130 is your episode. So, <laughs> I'm um, appreciative of you both being here and hopefully we can do this again sometime soon um, when uh, Christina graduates uh, yeah. and becomes a full-fledged 100% veterinarian. <laughs> <Yeah>. Four years. <laughs> yeah. Four years. So, bigger and better things in the future. Definitely. Thank you both for being here. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.